Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This is vlog 19, first week of June, and I'm in Maryland Zone 7. We're going to walk through the whole garden today. I'm going to show you things that aren't working out, problems, failures, um, some tips on what you can start doing for preventing diseases right now. But I want to start right here. These are some new beds that I put down double shredded hardwood. And they started off, started off okay, but the onions here have been growing for three months, so this is a failure. They're all going to get pulled up. And what happened was, in the beginning, this filled up with lots of flying insects. I think some sort of root maggots or, you know, when the flies lay their eggs, it got down into the root system. Anyway, that's a lesson learned. Also mixed in here, lots of mushrooms have been coming up. And I guess maybe they compete with the plant. And you can see the mushrooms. And that keeps happening over and over again. You can see a hole back there too. That's from a rab uh, squirrel digging in there. This bed's doing a little bit better, but not good enough. So that, that will be pulled out. Garlic did fine. This bed is doing a little bit better, but you can also see all that growth on there. So somehow I think the different fungi that grow on there, not necessarily bad for your plant, but maybe compete with the plant. Um, a lot of these I'll keep in. I think some of these will get to full size. These are leeks and some of them are onions. This is the no dig bed that I started and I really over planted it right away. I wanted to see what it would do. In here you can see one artichoke and there was a tomato in there that totally yellowed out and died. Along the edges are radishes that don't look great. They've been growing far too long. They should look something like the radishes down there. And what I did find is this bed dries out really quickly. So the edge of the bed would dry out fast and I really wasn't keeping the watering up. So I did think it did affect the radishes a little bit. It might be some nutritional stuff, but I think this will be perfectly fine, you know, after a couple months go by. While I was in here looking around, I found large red ants and I followed them to see where they were going. And they were coming in here. I just cut the grass. They were coming in here, and there you can see one, and they were making a home right in here. So one of the things that loves cardboard are these ants, and I'll have to figure out how to address them. I'm not sure if they damage the garden or not, but they're probably all in this space and I'm actually working on using orange oils um, and neem oil to control ants. Um, the recipe right now, don't use it because I haven't really tested it yet, is four tablespoons of orange oil to a gallon of water, one tablespoon of neem oil, and two teaspoons actually of peppermint oil too. So this is the no dig bed doing okay. What I love and what I'm going to be using this for is potatoes. These are potatoes. They're doing really well. I'm going to be able to plant this whole space out as potatoes, not have to put it inside my garden, inside the fence. Rabbits seem to be leaving this alone. And also it looks like it's doing pretty good for these onions I put in later and for leeks. So I'm going to be growing leeks, onions, and potatoes in my no-dig bed. Okay, let's go inside the garden. And my garden inside is totally functional for me to harvest stuff, but it's also set up a little bit as a teaching garden. So there's a lot of different designs in here. These are metal beds, no bottoms, if you've not watched my channel before. So these are basically raised beds. Now this is my second year of just using double shredded hardwood in this bed, and a year later it's doing really well. It did pretty well last year too. Red beefsteak coming up. The peas did really well in there. They're all going to get harvested this weekend. I have some garlic. And again, these mushrooms are popping up everywhere. But in this aged double shredded bed, it, it doesn't really seem to be affecting the plants. That's a yellow uh, squash plant I believe I just put in. A couple of pepper plants. These peppers are struggling a little bit. It's a little bit yellow. When you see something like that, just give them a drink of water-soluble nitrogen, whatever you want to use. Any water-soluble fertilizer that has N, P, and K represented. This bed is carrots to the right. They're doing really well. 
and these are all beets in the front. Now your beets, depending on where you live, these look pretty good, but they're going to start getting some sort of leaf fungus on there, but that's okay. It doesn't look great. If you're growing to eat the greens, it's a problem, but I'm growing these for the beets. They'll be perfectly fine, and that's all cilantro right in there. I think this is interesting. So if you've been watching and following my channel, you know that I had a frost come in damage the plants. Well, this is a damaged plant. It's come back at full force, but also popping up next to it are seeds that were left there from last year. And you can see how quickly the seeds that were there are catching up to the plants. So, so if you're seeding tomatoes, they're going to grow pretty fast when the right temperatures come. They were protected from the frost and that freeze. They didn't care. But as soon as it warmed up, they just took off from seed right out of the ground. Now they're not as big as some of my other plants that weren't damaged by the frost. I'll show you those. These are potatoes growing in 10 gallon containers, which I sell. They're on back order right now. The shipment because of COVID and stuff are all messed up so we didn't get our supply as we wanted to. But they will be coming back. Another space in here. Those are Brussels sprouts. And what you want to be looking for on these or on the underside, you want to be checking to see if they have, that's water drops coming down. But you would see these little white flies coming around. That would be white flies. That lets you know you need to take care of that. No holes in the leaves. There's no cabbage worm on there or anything like that. Let's walk across to the big kale area. All these sunflowers that you see, I decided to leave. They reseeded from last year and first week of June. Look how tall they are. They took the frost. They're just doing their own thing and I'm going to have sunflowers blooming really, really early. If we get into here, you can see some large holes in that leaf straight down. That's when it's something that size, it's usually from snails and slugs and you want to go through and you want to look to just make sure you don't have all these holes starting in here. If you do, that's usually cabbage worms, something along those lines. I do have some holes. I've been treating them. Every 7 to 14 days, you want to be spraying with neem oil. After I started spraying, this damage stopped, but the holes are still there. So that's what you're looking for. When you're spraying, you want to spray before problems come. Green cabbage worm always comes through here. You can see I'm experimenting with this. I'll do more on it if it's successful. The white moth that lays the eggs for the cabbage worms are supposed to be pretty territorial. We just had a storm last night, so they're all stuck. So when they see something flying around like this, they tend to stay away. And it's sort of actually working in this space. The butterflies still come in here, the moths still come in here, but they're staying away from this space. So I was saying, you want to make sure you start spraying about two weeks before the problems arrive in your area. The cabbage look good. Not a lot of holes, and that's really what preventive spraying does. Is it? You still get the worm comes, lays the eggs. The neem oil is already on there. The eggs get messed up from the oil, or they hatch. They eat a little bit of the leaf. The worms die. That's what you want to do. More uh, beets in here, all looking pretty good. And here's a little bit of what happens to the leaves. These are tomatoes that are going to be growing up the cage. Asparagus, nice and tall, letting that grow for the season to charge up the roots. When you come in here, a really large squash that is really almost doubling in size. We've had like 90 degree days, high 80 degree days for the last four or five days and tons of rain. They look pretty good. This will get powdery mildew, stink bug eggs, all kinds of stuff and again you want to start spraying and preparing for that ahead of time. I'll be doing a couple videos on the different antifungal do-it-yourself sprays I make, um, sprays for pests. They're already on my channel but I like to do them every year because new people sign on. This is red Russian kale doing extremely well in sunken containers. Half of the bottom is cut out. They grow right into the earth in between a half peppers. 
but look how nice these are. These were seed started doing really well. Now this was a problem but it's really kicked in. The only problem now is you know the asparagus gets in the way. I'll figure that out. But that is a brand new bed with shredded hardwood that I put in fresh. It wasn't aged. Um, I added in different blood meal, organic fertilizers, and it really just didn't take off for the first really six to eight weeks. The plants were small, they didn't do well. Everything passed it. Like that kale that's larger now was pretty much out of this batch over here. Anyway, what you do is if you're using the shredded hardwood and the plants aren't really taking off, just give them water-soluble fertilizer with nitrogen. I was using fish emulsion about every week, more often than I normally would, and eventually everything kind of works out and all the plants are taking off. And what's kind of cool is the smaller lettuces in there aren't bolting like the ones did out here in the full sun, which I've already eaten or I've pulled out. So I'll get a lettuce harvest for about another week out of there. Here's a fungus and it's actually dying off now, but it was much more light colored, um, a lot more fluffy, no black on there. But that's really, I think it's called uh, a vomit fungus because that's what it looks like. And that's the remains, it spreads. You can scrape it away. I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's just really unsightly. And I just left it there, so it looks like it's dying out. Now, when you leave a fungus in, you leave mushrooms in, they leave spores behind, they'll probably come back when the weather conditions are right. Time for weeding. I'll be doing all that. There's a great looking cucumber in there. That needs to be put up the trellis. You can see the new leaves are really green. The leaves right there are a little bit beat up. That's nothing really to worry about. But I'm going to start spraying the undersides of that this week with peppermint oil. Keep the spider mites away. Irritate the spider mites. If you get insects or diseases in your garden, you're probably going to get them the following year. So you want to plan for them. Use your journal. Write down what's going on. These are tomatoes that were transplants. And you can see they're a lot bigger. They're getting lightly pruned. I always bottom prune. As the plant gets bigger, I take out more from beneath the plant so air can circulate through. I recommend mulching, keeps the moisture in, better for the plants, keeps that even moisture in the root system area. Shredded hardwood will break down over a season, bring nutrients back to your garden. Also when I weed, you can notice I just actually come in, and this is, I think it's a, a good tip actually, I had to learn it from somebody, is instead of trying to get all the roots out of there, I just get in and sometimes the roots come up, but I just break off the leaves. Eventually, by starving the plant, because they use the leaves to bring in energy from the sun, the root system dies. So you don't have to spend a lot of time weeding. Like you can do a whole area, you know, in 15 minutes. Or whenever I'm planting or adding something, I just reach down and start pulling the leaves out. I also scatter dill. That's dill. That's dill back there. A lot under there, even it looks like asparagus, but you can see it growing right there if you have a good eye. And cilantro. So I let those plants come up. Pollinators love the flowers of cilantro. The dill attracts um, butterflies. They lay their eggs on there. You know, I let them go on that. And I also use the dill. It's pretty cool. Here's a space getting set up in the process of just putting in different plants, melons, cucumbers, things like that. Now this is about the size, maybe that's, I don't know, two feet tall, 18 inches tall. This is a time when I start using the aspirin sprays on my tomato plants. You can do it sooner, it's not gonna hurt them. I just found it really wasn't necessary. So I will spray them with the aspirin spray. Um, this is also the time I start doing the antifungals. I always get early blight. So if I don't start spraying now, I'm going to be spraying when the early blight arrives on the leaves. And if you can stop the fungus, the fungi, leaf spot, early blight from getting hold of your plants, then you're going to do a lot better. They're not fighting that off. The peppers are all kicking into high gear with this heat. This one was almost knocked all the way down. 
you can see how bushy they are. I didn't do any pruning, top pruning this year, because uh, nature did it for me with the frost. But all the plants that have had the tops damaged, they're coming in really bushy. So top pruning or pruning the top of your peppers does work. It sends out all these shoots from beneath the damaged area. This lost its complete top and now it's coming back in full force. More peas. And the tomatoes in here, one, two, three, four, five, all cherry types. They're going to be guided right up the stakes that I have there into the trellis and that will make the cherry tomato tunnel that I've been talking about. Transitioned all of my cool weather crops to tomatoes. You can see I'm doing tomatoes in the vertical towers that I recommend. I'll put a link in the description. Peppers. Basil. Now where we waste our money is going to the stores and buying a basil plant for like three or four bucks. Usually when you get them, they are, usually when you get them, they have been struggling with being watered. You put them in, they flower quickly, you don't get a lot of basil. A basil seed pack costs about two bucks. Sprinkle seed down. After they come up, two weeks later, sprinkle more seed down. You'll save yourself a lot of money and you will have basil for the entire year. And the same thing with cilantro. It's really inexpensive to buy from seed. It grows really fast. The cilantro I showed you in the beginning of this video was all done by seed about eight weeks ago. This is cilantro that's starting to die out. That was from the scattered seed. Not only does it flower, it starts seeding itself. So it'll get seed pods, they'll drop, and it'll keep coming back. And you can see that I have cilantro, anything with the white flowers has just been scattered around. I'll start pulling that out and putting more in. I highly recommend putting flowers in your garden. It attracts the pollinators. This is columbine that's dying out. This is parsley in here. And probably if we look around we'd find some caterpillars. I grow the parsley so that uh, the good butterflies have a place to lay eggs. They love eating parsley. So that does two things. White flowers bring in pollinators and you give food for butterflies like the monarch and different types. Sunflowers, dwarf size, are perfect for your containers. These only get about two feet tall. They're on the left and they're on the right. This is the end really of my cool weather crops. Endive did really well. Peppers are coming back. This is spinach, which I'll pull out today. And when it gets warm, when the soil temps get to like 60 degrees and stay 60 degrees, all your cool weather crops flower. They bolt, they flower, they set seed, flavor changes. In here is an eggplant, and all the, you can see one moving if you have good eyes. That's a flea beetle. There's two of them now. Three, four, five, six. Flea, beetle, flea beetles attack my eggplant all the time and the only thing that works is dust they're going to need to be treated. I put the dust down stick a bag over it keep other insects from landing on the dust it works. Now it's been raining so I missed the dust and you can see they all came back. This one's doing pretty good but if they're over there they're going to be over here pretty soon and right in here is another one and there's some flea beetles in there so this again is the perfect size to start putting your sprays down on your tomatoes, 18 inches, 24 inches. And to really start thinking about what diseases, what pests come to your garden and start your routine now. Thanks for watching. Oh, one more thing. This crazy contraption, because all the stores are closed, I wanted to get some tennis rackets. Can't get to the store. So I made this, and I'm actually swatting with that. You just pick it up, it's like a tennis racket. Keep a couple in your garden, throughout your garden. And then when you see that white moth, yeah, you do have to kill it, but that's the way it is. Swat the moth with the tennis racket, kill it off. It will save you having hundreds of eggs laid throughout your garden. Um, a lot of times we just see them, we shoo them away. 
use a tennis racket. It's a real easy swing to knock the moth down, the butterfly down, and kill it. Sorry if you don't like killing insects, but we can't do everything, and we're just killing the insect that's the problem. We're not putting down chemicals and stuff like that. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.